Boom. We are live. I can feel it. There we go. And you guys aren't gonna, so, you two, what's up? We're live. I'm Anthony Ladon, AKA Mr. Pink Shirt Guy. Coming at you live, what is it, April 6th? But I have a new treat for you. I've got a new, very special uh, treat coming up. Hold on one second. That was great, wasn't it? We're still working out the kinks. We got some tunes playing, but yep, we are here. Avalikia, hello. I still don't know how to say your name. I hope that's right. I got uh, <laughs> got my mom asking, knock, 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 anybody home? Because I was one minute late on the live stream today. Whew. I know, very sorry. Very. It, that is, well, it's the theme song today. Who knows how long we're gonna be keeping it, but for right now, it is the theme song. If you if you came in now, and, and Instagram people, you missed it. I had a great theme song playing on over on the YouTube side, so that's okay. I still love you, but these guys get my full love and attention. <sighs> that's just how it works. <laughs> Although I need to get better at the I need to hit the button and then dance. Okay, Avalikia, yeah, yes, I got it, crushed it, got it right. Real, good to see you back. Linguafile eighty eight, welcome. Good to have you and mother as always. Um, this is gonna be a good day. Oh, we've got a special guest, by the way, another international joiner from uh, the great northern country of Canada. Welcome, Ellen. Good day to you. <laughs> that, uh, eh? I don't know. I'm going with it. We're gonna just gonna lean into the good day for Canada. Um, okay, let me just get this all sorted out. We're good. Okay, so. Welcome. It's good to have all of you here. We have uh, what, how many? Eleven thousand. This is going to be a, a pretty, a pretty uh, rowdy crew. I can tell already, but that's a good bunch. I love it. Today's a very special day. Um, we first, well, first of all, the New York State Governor Andrew Cuomo himself <laughs> has extended quarantine through April 29th. Uh, some of you may look at that as a bad thing. I know we ought to stay under lock and key, but uh, I look at it as pretty good. I mean, they people asked the governor, they said, why'd you do it? How come? And his only response was, well, how else am I going to enjoy quarantine cooking with the pink shirt guy? It wouldn't be quarantine cooking. So really, the silver lining is we got renewed. We're going to be renewed for another couple of weeks. This is exciting news. <laughs> yes, Andrew Welly, your friend, Ellen. Welcome, good day from Canada. <laughs> it's good to have you on board. So uh, let's see, what you guys miss? We got renewed, that's big, uh, through April 29th. Thank you, Andrew Cuomo. Um, also today, it, yeah, it, it is very good. Uh, today is my brother's birthday. So happy birthday, Michael, as I call you, Chach. I don't know why we picked up on that name originally, but uh, we're going with it, so we're gonna keep it. But today's my brother's birthday, it's very exciting. He is um, 35, I think, right? 85, 35, it's 2020. Yeah, doing the math right. Um, we're actually only 16 months apart, so we're actually pretty close in age. Um, however, we are very far apart in manliness. It's true. Um, I don't want to rub it in, but, uh, but one of us actually grew up to join the Navy and work with the Special Forces, saving lives and uh, sailing the seven seas. But uh, the other one <clears throat> hosts a live cooking show from his tiny Manhattan apartment wearing a pink shirt. So uh, that's exciting. Who are you more proud of now, Dad? <laughs> it is weird. It's weird. We have um, uh, a good relationship, as any you know, one could ask of their brother. But we are kind of different, you know, versus one of us is going to spend the entire day today probably learning how to sew and then sewing masks for his family. That's good. Uh, and the other one is going to work really hard at Mario Kart. It's so hard. Moo Moo Meadows gets me every single time. Oh, God. It's hard. Uh, Moo Meadows is, is rough. Um, 
it is kind of sad. We aren't actually as close as we used to be as kids. We are still, whatever, 17, 16 months apart, but we're not as close as we used to be as kids. However, that is kind of good because we used to do a lot of dumb shit as kids. And uh, I think our wives are pretty happy. I don't think they would condone a lot of the behavior that we had when we played around together as kids. Um, probably wouldn't appreciate us putting on boxing gloves and going out back and just wailing on each other anytime we got bored. That was, that was for a few good years, that was uh, what we did. Just go out back <laughs> and, and boxed. Um, plus, I mean, come on, we all know who would win, right? I mean, we know. I did karate, okay? I took karate in college, so that was pretty good. Uh, for his birthday, for my brother's birthday, today we were actually gonna be making one of his absolute favorite dishes of all time, uh, chicken Caesar salad. It's a big thing, he loved it. Um, he was actually eating chicken Caesar salad before he even knew how to spell the word Caesar. So yeah, yeah, 2019 was a pretty big year for him. <laughs> Uh, he, yeah, he loved it as a kid. I'm not sure now, but, um, it was actually the only ingredients we could find. So <laughs> thanks, Corona. Crushing it. <laughs> anyway, that's it. That's it. It's my brother's birthday. Happy birthday, Michael. I, I don't call you Michael, but that feels weird. Chach. Happy birthday, Chach. Hope you're joining us. If not, this is going to be super weird. I'm just talking to a camera. Two of them, actually. And, uh, three of them, if you include this one. But, um, all right. So one of... I did ask him today, so we, let's see, yeah, I did text with him today, um, and I asked him what was his favorite, like, what is his favorite cocktail when he goes out? He drinks beer a lot of the times, which is great. I don't have any, so we're going with his second option. Um, hold on. I actually, my, my dog just used her wee-wee pad and needs a treat, so I'm going to cut her off some of this chicken breast that I cooked pretty solid treat earlier today so this is a pretty solid treat <laughs> there you go yeah don't sniff it just enjoy it it's good okay free range. <laughs> yeah it's free range just and cage free and all that fun stuff uh <laughs> yeah so anyway we're making a cocktail today uh his second choice is a whiskey based cocktail and since we've already done um manhattans and already done uh, old Fashions, and we've already done Boulevard EAs. I guess we're both pretty big whiskey fans. We're going to be doing a whiskey sour, which I'm almost 110% positive he doesn't love, or at least maybe not every day, but we're going to do it anyway because that's what we have, and I'm going to be reusing some of the other ingredients involved in this cocktail. So let's get to mixing. Yes, Lauren's in the background. <laughs> she is here with us. Um, I'm going to be shaking. I'm going to be straining. As if we weren't straining enough. Uh. Okay. Tools of the trade. Got our hardware set. Let's get our software. It's a whiskey-based cocktail, so we need some whiskey. My favorite bourbon right now is Woodford Reserve. It's, um, I think the quality for the price and the flavor, I just like it. We're gonna be using some lemon and some simple syrup and an egg. This is where it gets fun. And we're back. Oh, in case anybody's joining us on both, we've got Instagram and YouTube. I'm just trying it out, seeing what's good. Um, okay, so the first thing we need to do is I'm going to be cracking an egg. We're just going to be using the white for this drink. Now, this is technically optional. You don't have to have it, but I highly recommend it. I think it makes um, a big difference in terms of the cocktail because the white, it makes it like the mouthfeel. It just makes it so smooth. It's just great. Otherwise, it might be a little bit tart, but it's, it's great. Like my brother, tart. Okay. Oh, God, these are great. Now we're gonna separate this, we're just using the white, but I'm gonna save the yolk for our chicken Caesar salad dressing. I know, Craig, don't worry. I'm, uh, Ellen, hey, hello, good to have you. Yeah, Craig, no, I'm not gonna be making a sour drink without adding, oh, you know what, let's put the white in here. How about that, since that's gonna come out first. All right, just separate. These are pretty cold eggs. Cold egg, oh, don't pull the yolk. Yes. 
Cold eggs make for easier separating just because the, the whiter is tighter. And fresher eggs make for easier separating for the same reason. Come on, get in there. <laughs> do, you even, do you even make your own simple syrup? Oh, I, this was the first time I think ever that I didn't rail on store-bought simple syrup, but I'm just, I didn't go off on my, my little simple syrup box. <laughs> Andrew, tell me about this homemade simple syrup, would you please? I, I'm not aware. Okay, so this is the yolk we're going to save for the dressing. I'll just set this aside for now. You can use yolks in drinks. I actually think they're fantastic. More of a flip, I think, is the general style. Um, and it's a lot creamier. Uh, richer, but fantastic. Great with like um, uh, cr holiday cocktails. Okay. Got, some, got that there. Let's get some lemon juice going. Let's put you, I like to lean you there. I just don't knock that, Anthony. Do not knock that that way or that way or anyway. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, you guys, I love it. All right, I am going to, let's just cut off a little bit of this rind first, just because I'm going to use that for the drink. <laughs> Simple syrup's really hard to make, guys. All right. And now you can also pre squeeze your lemons if you want and have that in the fridge. That'll last you maybe a day before it gets, for the acid loses its bite. But I didn't really, I wanted you to see me squeeze it. That's why I didn't do it beforehand. And it has nothing to do with the fact that I'm a very poor plant. Okay, good, good. You sit there, all right. Now we are going to need a half ounce of this. I hope we have enough. Let's do, let's do a half ounce in the cocktail. Make sure we got that. Perfect. And then I'm going to make sure we have a half ounce for our dressing. Okay, good. We've got that reserved. I could have just looked at it. That's way over half ounce. Done. And a little bit of simple syrup. Let's go with like a, a quarter ounce on this. If you like your drink sweeter, you can add more. I don't know if you guys know, um, you can make your own simple syrup in the microwave, equal parts sugar, water, nuke it. It's great. It's really, really easy. You guys on Instagram may not be privy to the inside joke I have with each and every one of our YouTube viewers joining us here. Um, make sure. Yeah, okay, good. For a second, I thought I threw the yolk in. I was talking all about it. Um, all right, two ounces of bourbon. I don't know if you can hear in the background, my dog is just whining. Like she's just sitting on the bed. She's got a toy in her mouth and is just a high-pitched whine. I do the same sometimes. Uh, we're first going to give this a dry shake. Whoop. That. Let me turn that off and let me go into do not disturb mode, which it's on. Okay. Sorry about the interruption, guys. Um, we're just going to give this a dry shake. So a dry shake. Yeah, I know, right? Who knew that you could do that? A dry shake is just shaking all these ingredients without the ice in it. Uh, what that's going to do is just help us emulsify the egg white, get everything mixed in well, and then we're going to add the ice to this, uh, shake it, and chill it down. All right. Oop. Let's get a good tight seal on that. Perfect. It's a good thing I shook it that direction. Yeah. What is going on there? All right. Perfect. And now we can add some ice to this. It's just, we just gave it a little mix. I don't, you, you can maybe see some of that. Hey, Mitchell made it. What's up? All right. Give it a shake. I'll shake it out here so it's not quite in your ears. I know, Craig, yeah, I did I, I did the assumed like, oh, it's pretty well sealed, and then it a little bit came out. So I 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. All right. Need to do some more push-ups. What, my 10 a day don't count? Oh yeah, Ross, I, I'd be happy to make one for you. Come on over, don't be so socially distant. Okay, and we're straining. And we're straining. See, look at that, isn't that pretty? Okay, now, a lot of this foam will come up in a little bit and uh, it'll rise up. We can dot this with a little bit of, I probably should have shaken a little bit harder because the harder you shake it, the, the foamier it gets, but I didn't want to make all sorts of noise for you guys, so. We can put a little bit of Ango on top. Oh, it's not gonna set just right, but, that, I botched that one up. Because sometimes it makes like a nice pretty, hold on. Okay, it still tastes great. But if I had shaken it harder, it would have had like a nice frothy foam on top. It's fantastic. And then when it sets up, you can put little dots of Angostura bitters on there. But that's what happens sometime on live YouTube. You screw up and uh, you don't shake it hard enough, but you still can drink it. It tastes mighty good. All right. Hmm. All right, good. That's, um, we're gonna keep drinking that. That's awesome. Oh, cheers, Michael. Happy birthday, by the way. Oh, I gotta show you guys a picture. So, this is actually a picture of my brother. This is us, as kids. Um, I'm on the left. I think, I don't know if the directions are the same on your side, but I'm on the left. I'm the one with the black vest on, because, well, you know, once a player, always a player. He's the one on the right, so that's, uh, that's us then. I think that was a long time ago, maybe a few years ago. Uh, that's us then. This is us now, or a few years ago. Uh, so we didn't change that much. <laughs> one of us had just come out of uh, basic training, and the other one hadn't run more than a couple miles in, since high school. So anyway, there we go. That's us. That's my brother Chach, Michael. Uh, is it, oh, Ross, I 100% need a haircut. It's the light and the, the camera, yeah. But it's mostly that I need a haircut. Anyway, that's Michael. So, happy birthday, bro. I don't know if you're even on. Hopefully you are, but if not, fine. Oh, that cocktail's good. All right. So you can kind of see like there's a little bit of foam. I feel terrible. I totally screwed this up on you guys. I was like, I just wanted to play it safety, uh, uh, play it safe and um, oh, I didn't shake it. That's right. Hmm. There we go. Simple serve. You can also make this yourself. <laughs> That's okay. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> Michael is now on the left. Are you telling me that, Mom? Wait, which one am I? Oh, hey, there he is. He's on, bro. Good to have you. You missed the whole, I don't know if you were on the whole time, but whatever. You can watch it from the beginning. Did my whole opening monologue about you. Uh, oh, and the, oh man. And I forgot the twist. Two strikes already, Anthony. Pink shirt guy is on major fail patrol Mondays, am I right? All right. That's good. Let's clean this out. Is everybody under quarantine still? Like the rest of the world? I know China is starting to kind of branch out a little bit, like they're releasing it. Uh, but I don't, like I know we're gonna be doing this for a long while. I don't know. I need like an Andy Richter. That's what I need for some of these really good jokes. You know, someone to play off of. Cause I've got it. Oh, I could do like a Bailey cam. That would be kind of fun. Just have, just cut to Bales, my dog, my Pomeranian and her constant disappointment. Um, okay, so for the chicken Caesar salad, 
This is, it's not a very complicated dish, which I figured would be great for a Monday, also because these are the most, mostly the ingredients that I could find. Um, <laughs> Gruyere! Uh, but yeah, chicken soup, we're just gonna be making a dressing and then we're gonna be doing a little bit of a twist um, on the chicken Caesar salad because we're going to broil the lettuce, which I think makes it huge. I think it's kind of popular right now. It's kind of in, um, but I think it just makes a huge difference because it's the lettuce is already just a tiny bit bitter anyway. And then when you broil it off, it gets so, it's so nice. It gets a nice crust, not quite caramelized, but just it's got this nice bitter burn on it. Um, and I think it's a, it's a good change. It's like a nice way to change up the romaine. So, um, news from China is mixed. Okay, good to know. Yeah, oh, hey, Ross is on there too. Welcome, Ross, good to see you. Welcome on board. Are you on both? We're straddling technologies because I'm streaming here and there. Camera one, camera two. Is that, I think I need to have a Wayne's World reference in every single episode of Quarantine Cooking. That would make for a great show, in my opinion. Nobody else's. All right, so first things first, let's get, um, let's get a dressing going. Shall we? We need a garlic clove. We need some anchovy. And we've got our egg yolk. I'm going to resist the urge to say anything like yolks on you. But he might, I didn't say that. I just said that I don't want to say that. You guys know what I mean, right? Um, yeah, everybody, ha jump in. Happy birthday. Uh, we go. Oh, yeah, Inception, right? Oh, man. Um, okay, and let's get some salt going. I'm totally discombobulated today. I feel like I woke up and I'm like, what day is it? Is it tomorrow already? It's confusing. I need a knife. Let's get a knife going. Okay, now we're gonna be making a paste out of this first. It'll just help it mix in to the rest of the, uh, the dressing. And we can do that by, let's pop that bad boy. Let's get cracking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Andrew, real tough living in the shadow of a pink shirt. Uh, let's, let's cut back to the old, th this is us now. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. And then let's pull out an anchovy fillet. Now, Chach, I don't know, do you even like, did you know that there was anchovy in uh, Chicken Caesar when you were a kid and you liked it? Um, or I, I didn't know if you liked, if you knew that or not. Do you know that now? Is this like a Santa Claus thing? Oh, by the way, if there are kids on, Anchovies aren't real, but uh, yeah, let me know if you knew that. We're gonna slice it pretty thin and then we're gonna mince it up with the anchovy. Basically, we're gonna make a paste on the board. And to do that, uh, just gonna give it a, a thin slice first and then we'll do a little rough cross chop to mince. Good, got it, boom, okay. And then let's give it a little cross chop to get it all nice and small. Hey, welcome everyone. By the way, if you see me talking that way, uh, I've got a YouTube live going on here. You can swipe up, or I don't know if you can swipe up, but if you check the link in my bio, you can join me here. The link in the bio should have a big button on top. It says live show, and that's over here. And you guys, you're always gonna be number one in my heart. These guys are number two. You're number one, it's fine. Oh, you didn't know that until you were 20 something. Okay, cool. Well, joke's out now. All right, we'll slice up the uh, anchovy. And you know what? We might just do two anchovies here. So I've got one garlic clove. Let's do another chovy. Why not? Oh, that's such a great mom thing to say that he made his own shadow. I love it. Really good. All right. I need to get in there with a little fork. Perfect. That looks like about enough. Okay. All right, just give that a rough.
rough chop. And now let's just go in together with both of them to kind of mix it up. We'll add a sprinkle of salt and then we'll kind of smear them to help basically just mush them all together into kind of a paste, which will be great for this dressing. Because I don't want like giant chunks of garlic in there. You know what I mean? All right. Let's go a little bit more. Perfect. And I'm just like just smushing my knife down. That's all I'm doing here. And kind of just mashing them together, mixing it around, and then smush. Technical term. This is what chefs teach at chef school. It's what they make in their chefeterias. Smush. Let's give it another chop. Just to keep mincing it down. <laughs> no! Andrew, she loves me the most, not you! Dang it! <sighs> Competing for my mother's love. <laughs> All right, keep going here. This is it, we're just getting smaller and smaller. This will be nice because it'll get, it'll be so much easier to, to whisk in to the actual dressing. <laughs> And a little bit more salt. The salt kind of helps. It's gonna be pretty salty, but this is just a very small portion. We're gonna have a lot of oil and plenty of lemon juice in there. But the salt, like the grit there, kind of helps break it down a little bit too. I think we're just gonna go with that. That's it. Perfect. Okay, done. That's pretty good. Can you see that on the board? Yeah, kind of. It it's a little hard. I know you're probably looking in real close, but I know you guys can't. I can't move you around. I'm so sorry, but if you join me on the YouTube. <laughs> okay, perfect. Let's just dump this in. Get all that good stuff up. <laughs> uh, we've got the yolk in there. Let's get a little bit of Dijon lemon and, some, and then we'll start drizzling in a little bit of oil and then we'll be done with the hard part. Don't mind me while I wash up. Talk amongst yourself. Alright, okay. Delightful. How's everybody's week going so far? Good? Off to a good start? I hope. Um, let's, uh, let's get some Dijon mustard too. All right, we're just gonna put maybe about a, like a, a little over a half of a tablespoon, like two teaspoons-ish. Just, you don't, it's quarantine times. So you don't have to, you can guess, you can guess. If it ends up a little bit too mustardy, that's okay. There are worse things that could happen. Oh, have I mentioned to you guys how much I love this specific kind of uh, Dijon? Have I mentioned that today? No? Mela or male? So good. It's great. Oh, you guys probably deserve to see. I just, it's so much, I think it's way better, stronger, more flavorful than Grey Poupon. They don't have as cool of commercials though. Although I guess those commercials were like from the 80s, so. I don't know. All right, we got some of that. Let's get a little bit of oil ready and about a half ounce uh, or like a tablespoon-ish of lemon juice. I'm gonna go a little bit lighter to start just just in case, because I can always add a little bit more if it needs a little more acid. And I'm just gonna give this a mix. Thanks, puppy. We got you. Uh, I'm gonna add just a wee bit more. This is so good. So we're up to about three quarter ounce. I don't know if anybody, I, I'll put the recipe on my website either, is it Myla? Is that how I say it? Oh, thank you so much. Oh, Ellen, you are our lifesavers. Is, was it, Laura, you're here. Was it early 90s, was that right? Okay, good to know. Oh God, you guys, I'm learning, I'm learning more from you than you are from me. I know that for a fact. Um, all right, good. So I'm doing, mixing it super well, and then now we can add the oil. If you have an immersion blender, use it, that's great. You can also make more of this. Um, I'm just gonna drizzle in about, I don't know, three tablespoons-ish of this, and then we'll kind of adjust. Uh, 
I didn't measure some of these things, so if we need to add more, that's fine. I've got a little cheat sheet up here. We'll probably add closer to, actually if I'm doubling this, we'll probably add closer to six. So I'm just gonna drizzle in slow. I just wanna create an emulsion. That's what this is for. If I added it all in at once, <laughs> oh, is that right? Uh, Mitchell, it's, what time is it? I'm on Eastern Standard Time now, or is it daylight? It's uh, 5.32, Mitchell. And Ellen, is it, or excuse me, Dr. Foster, is it, uh, or Professor Foster, is it my, is that all I would say? Or is it like my, oh, it is just my, right? Cause the double L and the E kinda, oh now, okay, everybody else is going French, great. This is where I drop out. I just restarted doing my little French tape things. Is it, is it, keep parle français? Il y a plus, oh gosh. Okay, so we're getting there. You can see, like, this is a decent emulsification. It all looks pretty homogeneous, or is it homogenous? Uh, that's what we're going for. Maybe we should all take a field trip to France. Oh, yes, I'm down. Okay. I was just uh, in Paris about a month ago, like, right when everything started. Like, as we left, everybody was like, hey, maybe we should shut down stuff. Uh, it was perfect timing because they were still open while we were there, but then they shut down about a week later. So, all good. Oh, good. All right. Thank you. Appreciate the heads up. Just my. Oh, that's so much easier. I love it. Okay, this is looking pretty good. I'm going to do a quick taste test just to see where we're at. Um, I, it probably would have been easier had I measured, but I got so excited talking to you and even you that, uh, that I didn't. So. Oh, that's super good. It's nice and tart. I still am gonna add just a little bit more oil. Just a little bit more, stretch it out. And you can adjust this based on your taste too. So if you love really tart stuff or sour flavors and lemon, great, add a little bit more acid. If not, then don't, that's fine too. Um, yeah, either way works. If you don't have some of this stuff, like you, put, if you don't have lemons right now, I would just use like a white wine vinegar. You could, if you don't have that, you could cheat maybe and use like a red wine vinegar. That's fine too. Or even, I don't know how different it would taste with like an apple cider vinegar or a rice wine vinegar, but at the end of the day, like you've got a lot of other flavors going into this. So it's probably going to be okay. Um, oh, and we're not adding Gruyere to this, but we will be adding a little bit of parm. Isn't that great? Nope, that's for here. Hold on. Yes. <sighs> Deliveries are getting harder to come by. I'm now I'm now down to like once one delivery every eight days. So now I have to order parm by the pound, which I know doesn't sound like a lot, or maybe it does. I don't know. But I, we go through this stuff pretty quick here. I realize that life could be way more difficult, so please forgive me. I'm not, I don't mean to complain, but I'd love, I love it when I can just the night before say, oh, I'd like some food delivered to my home now, please. And then the next morning it comes. Um, and so once every eight days is uh, different. And I'm gonna be adding, I don't know, four tablespoons. That's a nice commute. I know, Andrew, for once I got this right. I think I wrote parm on, oh no, I didn't write anything on it, but it was a big enough block where I could tell that it actually says, oh, let's get the light perfect. It says parma, nope, it's not gonna focus quickly enough for me. No, it says parmigiano on it, so I know. Isn't that great? You guys get to see the top of my head. Ooh, bald spot, no. All right. It would have been great had I been wanting to use parm and then I ended up only having Gruyere. That would have been perfect. Every time, Anthony, really? Okay. Good, good. I know I miss, <laughs> yeah. I, I always feel bad because like the comments are good. I'm like, wait, hold on, I want to be part of the conversation. But I realized that 
I can't insert myself into every single conversation. But I can. Okay, there we go. That's it. We'll give it another quick taste test. That's a super nice balance. I like the egg yolk, nice and rich, good base. Got the oil in there to give it a little bit of flavor. The parm on top, I love that little note. And it's got enough citrus in there to like kind of cut it. So we're good. Now let's get the, um, let me get the broiler started first of all. Oh, I gotta tell you, chicken. You can cook this however you want. If, if you have a grill handy, that's great. Um, if you've got a, a pan and that in your pan roasting, do that or pan searing and, and basting it. You can do that too. Do whatever you want or you can broil it. I won't tell you how to do that perfectly. What I will tell you is how I'm doing it, which is sous vide it. All I, so I, I bought um, on accident, we ended up buying like a family pack of chicken breasts on Friday and for our delivery. And uh, so we have a lot of chicken breasts to use up. So what I did was I bagged them all up individually in sous vide bags. It vacuum sealed them, threw them in the freezer. That's all I did. And I labeled them too, just so I know how long they've been in there. Because I've got, sometimes I get things more fine. Uh, sometimes I've got things in there that are like really old. Oh, you know what, we'll put more on top. Um, but anyway, I sous vide it. So straight from the freezer, right into the water bath. I set it to 65, because I like my chicken kind of tender, but also not like steak texture. Like I like it to fight against the knife a little bit, you know, have some sort of cut and um, 65 Celsius, I find to be perfect. Fahrenheit, 149. So if you might wanna start at like 66 or 150 or something. Okay, Andrew, yes, that's a great idea and you totally can do that. I love doing that. Uh, I think Ina Garten has a fantastic recipe for roasting it with skin on. I mean, really, the, the basic recipe is just uh, rub it in olive oil, salt and pepper, skin side up, throw it in the oven at like, I don't know, I'd probably do 425, 400 maybe, until the skin kind of renders out and then it totally cooks up. I don't know, 30 minutes or so. I don't know, Andrew, you might know off the top of your head what it is, but I don't. Um, so yeah, Ina Garten has a great recipe for uh, uh, skin on like bone in chicken breast. It's a great way to do it. It's also really easy and it's so much cheaper when you buy chicken breast with the skin on. It's just, it's incredible, it's like half the price. And you get all the flavor from all the fat and everything, fantastic. This was more of an accidental purchase. Um, or if you like doing the boneless, skinless, that's fine too. Um, but I, if you want to do stuff in bulk too, this is an easy way, just buy it in bulk, bag it up individually uh, with a vacuum sealer and then freeze it. And then throw it straight into the bath. I did this for maybe, I don't know, an hour and a half because it was frozen. I mean, you can probably get away with an hour if it's fresh. That's probably fine. I think they, they suggest like pasteurizing it for an hour at whatever, t you know, at like 65 or something like that. But don't quote me on that. Um, there's other great sources out there. Modernist Cuisine at Home, uh, Chef Steps is a good place to look as well. I think they have pretty good specific things that they recommend. Um, 153C for a couple hours. Oh yeah. So Craig, great idea. I, the, the lower temp, that's, that's definitely going to be super moist. Um, that's pretty good. I like that too. Um, for this, I kind of want this, but yeah, we are going to be doing a sear at the end and <laughs> I love that idea, Ellen. Okay. So chicken's done. This is done. Let me clean up here and then we'll prep. Oh, you know what? I don't need to clean up because we need to prep the lettuce. Okay. This, hold on. My board getting dirty. There we go. You guys, parm chunks and everything. Okay, perfect. Boop. I've got one heart of romaine. This should be enough for two people, at least my wife and I, including the chicken and stuff. That'll be good. And like I said, we're going to be broiling this just to really sear up. You could um, either throw you could throw this on the grill as well. That's totally fine. I've done that. You could. Uh, put it in the pan, like put a little olive oil on it and then just put it, you know, cut side down in a pan just to get it nice and brown. Also a solid option. Um, but for this one, let's trim up that bottom. We're just going to cut it in half and we're just going to 
throw it on a sheet pan, face up, a little olive oil, salt, pep, and then uh, broil the heck out of it. Uh, let's do right down this line. Oh, we lost a man. Man down! Man down! Okay, good. See, this would be kind of fun, though. Now we've got... Oh, just stay together, guys. Hold it together for another minute. This will be good. I'm going to throw this on a sheet pan. Oh! Actually, I'll throw it on this sheet pan, which has been preparing my, um, my bread. Now, this is... This is another step that we're going to get to in a second. I'll explain. Hold on. Okay, so to repeat, if you're making this at home, the steps are, which I didn't outline earlier, make the dressing, make the croutons, and then assemble everything. I did it a little bit. I didn't explain that, but that's basically what we're doing. So. This is pretty much good. I'm going to put a little olive oil on this, a little salt, and that'll be good to go. A little bit more. A little bit more. Done. And you can kind of, you can assault a little more aggressively. Like it's a lot of lettuce in there, so you can put a decent amount on. Plus, this is going to be... Depending on how salty you have this, use your judgment. Decent amount, that'll be good. And some pepper. Oh, you know, you could also use, oh man, I should have used that. We made um, that olive oil seasoning, like with the oregano and crushed red pepper. You can use that on this too. I think we made that last week or the week before. I just noticed that I have some left in the cabinet, so that would have been great, but we're not gonna use that. Okay, this goes in last minute. In the meantime, I'm gonna make some room just so I don't destroy everything here. Uh, this bread, I've had thawing. It's, a, it's like a, this is a bread that I get from our grocery delivery service. It's basically just a little kind of demi baguette that's, it's already got some butter and like uh, seasoning and herbs and stuff on it. If you can, use either baguette or regular bread. Use whatever bread you have. I, I just have this and I need to use it up. So that's what we're going with. We're going to be making croutons. Uh, so I'm going to just kind of cut them in like one inch chunks. That's kind of what we're going for here. Beautiful. Two and a half centimeters for you Imperial, for, or your um, metric folks. That should be good enough for two people. And see, there's some of them are already buttered anyway. This is gonna be great. <laughs> Andrew, yeah. You can also make your own olive oil. It's great. Have I told you recently? Um, oh, we're gonna make these. I can't remember what we're doing here. I'm, I am going to toss these with a little bit more. Oh, let's get you on there. Can't forget about that. Olive oil. Now, yours probably won't come with butter on it, so you may need to add a little bit more olive oil just to kind of compensate. But we just want to be pretty generous here and mix it around because that's what's going to help this brown. And I know it looks weird because it's got the, the butter or fake butter, whatever that is, in there as well. But they'll brown up. They'll be real nice. Good, and in we go. Let's make sure we've got this thing set here. I think I've got a, I want it to be 350, it was like a 300, so. The other way you can do this, that if you're in kind of a time, uh, if you're not in a time pinch, is in a pan. Like you can get a cast iron pan, saute pan, whatever you've got, just throw them in there with a little olive oil, and you can brown them up that way. That's also quite handy. So I'm just baking them off for a few minutes and uh, that's, that's what I'm doing. In the meantime, I can start by prepping my chicken. So this is gonna be kind of fun. I need one more sheet pan. Do I have it? Yes. 
Don't need you, Silpat. Go home. Okay. I am done. Oh no, I will need the knife. See, I'm already trying to make more room, trying to get rid of stuff. Let's get our chicken out. So the one thing about sous vide cooking I found, and I think everyone will tell you, is that uh, on the one hand, it makes everything so much easier to cook because you can get it to the right temperature at the right time and you can just hold it there. It's not gonna, like a steak where if you let it sit in a pan, it's gonna overcook. This is not gonna overcook. If you let it sit in there for maybe like a long time, like several hours, I'm pretty, I might turn to mush at some point. I don't know when that is, but it hasn't happened when I've let it sit in there for like two hours, two and a half, so it's okay. The only thing is, you need to brown it somehow. Because this looks super unappetizing. It's just like a stick. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it's gross. It's like one little stick of chicken breast. It's weird. Um, so, Instead, we are going to be, you, you'll either want to throw it in a pan, kind of pan sear, just brown it lightly on both sides, um, or the more fun option is use a blowtorch. So that's what we're doing here. I just want it nice and dry. And you can do this with any meat or vegetables. I've done this with, I've done this to make toast in a pinch as well. Um, it works so well and it's also really fun. And I think this is one of the only ways I can really like up my manliness factor to compete with my brother. So, yeah. Just get yourself a regular old torch. You can go for one of the, like the super expensive, fancy ones. Um, oh yeah, you know what, Craig, good point. Yeah, oh no. Okay, so Craig brings up a good point that um, you don't have to brown it in a salad or in a chicken soup. So those would be like the two times where you probably don't have to brown it. I kind of just want to have fun with this and the way I want to serve this, I want it to, I want it to be brown. So, uh, and no, I don't have the sears all, Craig. That is a good question. I have seen it. I would love to try it out. I don't, I think my dad may have gotten it or no, he was thinking about buying it. Oh, idea for next Christmas, if that ever happens again. Um, but yeah, I still want to brown it just because I already have the torch out. I gotta do it. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, you could use Elon's flamethrower. That would be another option. We're just gonna go with a, a regular old torch. I think this is map gas. You can use the, they make like the fancy butane ones for like, um, uh, you know, like in the sexy little thing. That's fine too. This costs like 10 bucks for the canister and maybe 20 bucks for the top and it lasts a long time a lot longer than like the little butane sexy ones. So use whatever you want if you want to use it. But I just like how fun it is to use these. put a towel underneath the sheet pan just in case it starts to pick up some of that heat because I don't want it on my cutting board. I don't know if you guys can see this. Hey, what's up guys? If I'm talking, if you see me talking over here, it's just because it's my first love, my first love YouTube live. You guys are on Instagram, so. But if you, if you click my link in bio, you can join us here. It's way more fun, right guys? Yeah, right in front, okay. <laughs> Isn't this way more fun than just doing it in a pan? <sighs> yeah. Well, I, yeah, they were actually pretty cheap. I think this thing was like on Amazon, the top part was maybe 25 bucks and this was 10 or 15. Anyway, yeah, not bad.
the key is too, you don't want to get like right up in there and really burn it. Uh, John, yes, down the hall. I've got a flash extinguisher within about a 10 second run I can sprint to, so <laughs> not too far away. Um, but yeah, I just think this is way more fun. Beautiful. And now, side, I don't know what that is. Oh, I think that's maybe part of the bone. I don't know. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, it is kind of bone in. That's weird. Yeah, the director is just on the other side of the camera with the fire extinguisher ready. Really, there are easier ways to do it. Under, you can broil it for a few minutes, that's fine. I mean, you can figure out ways to do this. But now it feels and it kind of smells like it's been on the grill a little bit. Not quite, it's not quite the same, but it's the same idea. Plus you get to feel power, you know, it's like fire. This does bring me back to my childhood because my brother and I used to play with fire all the time. <laughs> Just, we would make our own firecrackers by disassembling other fireworks. And uh, yeah, that was fun. Good times. Not safe times. Okay, that's ready. Now let's, you're probably still a little bit. Oh, you're fine. All right, so we'll slice them up. You are a little bit warm still. Now this is the one I made for my dog. Can you see the, here, let me turn the lights off so you can see the difference. See, doesn't this one just look so much sexier when it's been browned versus that? I mean, again, in a salad, it's probably okay not to brown it, as Craig mentioned, and also in a soup. If you're making chicken soup, highly recommend the sous vide way because then you get chicken that's just, it feels nice and moist going into that soup. But I think it's still sexier looking at it like this. So, <laughs> yeah, let your inner, inner pyro out. Absolutely, I would like you. Okay, you are there. Done. Let's get the rasper. We're gonna, we're gonna use you in a minute. Uh, we're just gonna cut kind of on the bias. That's, we're just gonna get large chunks to lay on there. And I think it's a little bit sexier when they're slightly on the bias like this, but you don't have to get fancy. Just cut it. You can chunk it out if you want. Go. Okay, Andrew, yes, creme brulee is coming up. Uh, it's either gonna be this week or maybe next week early. Yes, but yes, it's on the list. I'm so glad you asked, because I always think about that. Oops. And one for the taste test. That's pretty good. Okay. Yes, done. We will have creme brulee at some point, either this week, next week. I gotta figure that out. All right, let me check on those croutons. I think they're just about done. They are not, they need a few more minutes, but I'm just gonna turn on the broiler because I need it anyway for the next stage. And I'm just gonna broil these on the top and call it. Cause I don't want you guys to have to sit through the entire time and just listen to them and not be able to smell them uh, roast because they are quite good. All right, well now I'm, that's good. I'm getting, now I'm getting hungry. Yeah, exactly. Plenty of time to fit that in. We'll have, we'll have, I now got to come up with a few more weeks worth of recipes 
Thanks, Ravik, by the way, for the two. That'll help fill in a few days. And then we'll have, I don't know, any other, oh, Tiramisu, Monster Master. I was just thinking about Tiramisu today. I would love to. I, I love making Tiramisu. The director doesn't eat it, so it'll just be mine, I, which is nice, but it's also, that means that I have to eat an entire tiramisu all by myself. I mean, I'm, I'm up to the challenge. I'll be honest with you. I think I can do it. I, I hope I can. Yeah, any other requests, like other dishes? What's up? How's it going? Deb Deb Chan, good to see you. Um, yeah, any other requests, let me know. If you've got dishes that you'd like to see being made live, and maybe even screwed up too, because that's the other thing. I mean, a lot of these I've probably never... Okay, tacos, coming up this week. Uh, I don't have making tortillas though, so I would have to look that part up. I do not know. Um, and Ellen, chicken with tarragon and cream. Yeah, that sounds delicious. I'd have to order some tarragon for the... Uh, so it would be next week, but yeah. Oh, okay, Andrew, good question. So right now I've got to get ready for Easter. I do have a rack of lamb coming in the delivery on Friday. I, I wanted to do a leg of lamb just for the giant sexy presentation, but I don't know what two people would do with five pounds, five to six pounds of lamb meat, especially since it doesn't like freeze up super well. I don't know. Uh, that's a, if anybody has an idea of what I could do with that much lamb meat, uh, under quarantine. Otherwise, I would give it to you. But if anybody has an idea, of it, then I might do a lamb, a leg of lamb. But right now, it's going to be a, a rack of lamb. So that's on Friday to get help the <laughs> help the millions, all of you millions, get ready for Easter. Um, yeah. Well, okay, Craig. I do have. I don't have lard. Oh, maybe I do. I have duck fat, like in the freezer, that I've been waiting for an excuse to use. That is good. Let's get these in there to finish. And then we'll get the... Oh, you know what? I could probably just throw these in at the same time. What? All right, now I've got the lettuce, the romaine broiling, the croutons just finishing off with a light toast and broil. I'm gonna have to watch those a little close. Uh, yeah, Andrew, come on up. Oh, mom, lamb stew. Okay, good idea. Well, I like that idea. Um, hey, what's up, Instagram folks? Uh, okay, duck fat would work, good. Yeah, Andrew, maybe I'll just send it on the train, just pay a guy a hundred bucks or something to take it down to you. Maybe they would just do it from a socially safe distance. Croutons are almost there. Almost there. Ooh, duck fat roasted potatoes. Oh God, I gotta write these down. That is, I've got so many potatoes to use up too. Well, Yukon Golds, I, I, that sounds better with like fingerling to smash them, but okay. Tacos, lamb, yes. And then, hold on, I gotta turn these. Oop. Start to smell good. What did we just talk about? We had, oh, duck fat roasted potatoes. Duck fat roasted taters. Good, okay, thanks. Keep them coming, guys. I appreciate, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bill, <laughs> yeah, we do spend, le I have leftovers uh, every day for breakfast and lunch usually. I, or I find some way to incorporate the leftovers into like scrambled eggs or like, I, you know, for breakfast. Uh, the weekends, the most exciting thing for me on the weekends is being able to order takeout from our favorite restaurant across the street. That's normally we would go in there, but obviously we can't. So we've been ordering from them every weekend. Uh, and I try, the only like paying, heart paying I have is like, I don't want to waste food and I also, but I want to make sure we have, like I build in enough open space for West Bank. Um, oh yeah, tarragon, yes, thank you, Ellen, for the recall too. All right, tarragon chicken with cream. 
This is so good. Okay, tarragon chicken with cream. Okay, good. I accidentally got like a whole bunch of cream too. One of, did I tell you guys this? Stop me if I told you the story. But one of the delivery services I was using for groceries uh, got super confused on the grocery list and they're like, hey, they don't have this cream, but they have this other one. Do you want that? And I said, yeah. And then both ended up arriving. This is the same order where they were like, hey, they don't have the toilet paper that you requested. Do you want this other kind? It's the only kind. And I was like, yeah, get two. And then zero showed up. Uh, so it's the same order. But what was my point there? Oh, anyway, long story short, I've got like almost a gallon of heavy cream I need to use up. And I don't, it's not like I use that in every dish. So we're gonna be finding butter chicken. Great. I love that idea. And homemade naan, or maybe I can buy some naan from the. <laughs> An Indian restaurant. Uh, butter chicken. Love butter chicken. Okay. Hopefully, I can read my own handwriting. And then my mom's good. Uh, let's see. Just made peanut butter curry sauce. We did veg tofu rice, but the sauce is amazing. Yes, lemon, please. Send it on over. I'd love to see it. This tarragon chicken thing sounds kind of. I haven't cooked a tarragon in a while, like, uh, I don't, and I don't know why. So I'm gonna have to try that out. Okay. We're almost there. I keep checking on it because my biggest fear is that I'll start blabbing with you guys and then I'll burn the heck out of it. Um, but that hasn't happened yet, so. Oh, yes. Those are good, these a little salt. A little more. And voila. So I'm just gonna put a light sear on him now. Oh, I forgot about this little guy. He kind of came along for the ride. He got pretty toasty. So this is it. You can go a little bit harder if you want. Um, oh yeah, whipped cream. That'd be great, Craig. Thanks for the suggestion, yeah. So yeah, we could have gone a little bit harder on this, but kind of like when it stands up a little bit to, um, like when you have to cut through it just a little bit, you know, knife and fork it. So this is gonna be great. Make sure I don't have anything else left in there. Start fires. Perfect. So yeah, you can see that it's got a little color on it. Again, you could do this on the grill. Rebroil it, you could put it in the pan, that's fine too. There's so many different ways to do it. As long as you get heat on, oh, we could blowtorch it. Anyway, as long as you get heat on there somehow, that's what you're going for. Okay, let's plate this baby. People gotta eat. The nice thing too, if you have a grill and can do this on there, then like everything kind of gets the whole, uh, the whole half of a head gets a little bit wilted. It's, uh, and it crisps up kind of all over it. Super nice. Okay, oh, you know what? We'll do one on the pretty plate too, how about that? I should start taking pictures of these things. I realize as I'm going through the backlog of these recipes that I've been cooking with you guys, I've got like recipes I need to put together, but then I have no pictures of anything. It just doesn't look very good. Get over there. Okay, gotta break it open a little bit. Done. Perfect. Making a mess here, okay. Let's get a little bit of dressing on. Oh, this is gonna be so nice. We're, we made just enough dressing where we're not gonna have so much extra that I have to find an excuse for it. When we made the house dressing, like a, I think three weeks ago, I had a ton of dressing in the fridge and I just left it in there. It looked just like this. And my wife actually wrote a sticky note that just said WTF on it because I was so lazy and didn't do anything with it. Uh, and I had to find, we had to have salads basically. We had to make salads to get dressing out of there, but we did it. Okay. Actually, you know what? Let's get some chicken on there first. And you can kind of arrange this however you want. I think it looks kind of sexy when it's kind of fanned out like that. Can you, hold on, let's do this. Where do you got salt? Can you see that? Here we go. Don't fall knife. Okay, and then some for my lady. Done. Done. 
There we go. Okay, now let's get some croutons. Kind of stack them on if you want. You can kind of do whatever you want here. You can put them on the side, they go wherever. You could also cut this up too if you want. I thought, I always like this kind of presentation. It's kind of fun where it's a little bit of knife and fork action. It's a little do it yourself. Some assembly required. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Also, if you like your chicken a little bit drier, having this kind of a dressing on there will really help moisten it back up. So if you do like things on a little drier side, more for texture reasons, that's fine. This will just help bring some moisture back to it. And let's finish it with a little Malden sea salt. I just love when it has like chunks of actual sea salt on it. Perfect. That you can see and then you bite into. Oh, so good. Oh, some more parm. Should we put some more parm on? Yeah, there we go. Lingual file knows. Okay. Oh, and. I have a special surprise for you. First, let's get some more parm on there. I'll save these. I'll save these little ones for Bailey. See that? Okay. Is that too bright? Is that better for the main cam, having that off? Oh, we still gotta work this out. All right, I'll do this for right now, just so you can kind of see. More. Okay. Should get like a slow-mo cam here just to do that. Yeah, it's like it's snowed. Some angel dust. This is good stuff, right guys? Parm, 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 Oh, I gotta get another pound of this stuff. That I don't have it in my standing order. Whew. Okay, now I have one last little secret surprise that I think, I think is worth telling you about because it's kind of fun. These are cured egg yolks that I made. Um, I was going through a lot of eggs just to do souffles, and that's maybe one I'll make with you guys. I, I came up with a recipe that mirrored one that I had in Paris and that felt like it, and it involved no yolks whatsoever. No yolks. But I had to save them because I didn't want to just throw them away. And I read that you can clear, or you can cure egg yolks in a mixture of salt and sugar, and then bake them. And then, this is what you get. You get these little, like, pucks of egg yolk, and they are super good. Uh, they're kind of like, it's like little jolts of egg yolk kind of richness, a little umami in there too, like it's super good. Um, but you can grate it. It's, it's almost like the texture of Gruyere. So, super good. I'm gonna add a little bit here. The, and the, the color is kind of nice. It's like another little shaved yellow, which is kind of cool. And it kind of, it, you can see, I don't know if you can see, but it, it's like it's falling. It looks kind of like parm when it snows. I don't know if you can see on the bottom side of the rind there, or the rasper, right? Pretty crazy. It's pretty cool. And it's super easy. All, all I did was just in a bowl, threw some equal amounts of uh, sugar and salt, and then just made little indentations for the yolks, dropped them in there very carefully, covered them up, added more, like, cause I went through this over the course of three or four days. And then now you can, uh, at the end, I pulled them out, rinsed all the salt and sugar off, and then baked them really low. I think Epicurious and Bon Appetit kind of have, they have a great, like an easy to follow recipe. Uh, yeah, but it's super good. It's, it's like really concentrated egg yolk flavor, but it's, it's like not quite as 
you know, it's it's almost like it's in the anchovy family, but it's not anchovy. Like it's not fishy at all. It's eggy. I don't know if that makes sense. Or if you know what I mean. But yeah, you can just grate it. It's crazy. So if you want, and you can add this to like soups just for a little extra little punch there. It's super cool. So next time I make a whole bunch of these, uh, the drinks that you can't see because it's behind the picture there. Um, yes, Andrew, I will put the yolks on the website and I will let you guys know. Um, I think I can probably do that tomorrow. Man, it's super good. All right, let's taste this. Let's see how this thing is because that's the main reason we're all here. I'm going to steal a bite off of, you know, maybe I'll give that one to Lauren. It looks prettier and I'm going to take a picture of that one because I need to get better at this. Okay. Yes. A little bit of chicken. Got both some parm. Let's get enough dressing. Oh, and crouton. Oh, that's a good one. That's pretty good. That's a winner. It, it feels, actually, it doesn't really feel healthy. It feels good. And I think that's fair because there's a decent amount of stuff in there. Oh my God, that's so good. The balance of like the crunch of both the roasted romaine or the broiled romaine and the crouton is good. The chicken, nice, moist, perfect. That dressing is just a perfect balance of little tart punch with oil and salt. Oh my God. And you kind of taste a little bit of the anchovy come through. Highly recommend. I shouldn't be surprised. This is inspired by Thomas Keller's recipe for the uh, for the uh, uh, Caesar's dressing. So, oh man, okay, I'm gonna steal another bite. I was gonna give this one to Lauren, but maybe I'm gonna give her the prettier one after I take a picture. Okay, I'm gonna scarf my face here. All right, that's it. Let's cut this here because I'm gonna just start going to town on this thing. Yes, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. This has been so much fun. Yeah, there we go. You can still see. Um, yeah, we learned something new. Uh, I learned something new from Craig, I think every day. Um, and happy birthday, Michael. And just so you don't forget, this was us as kids. Me, Michael, happy birthday, bro. And this is us now. So you can kind of see the difference there. <sighs> Thanks for joining us, Chach. Ho hopefully you joined for some of it. If not, hope you're out celebrating your birthday. Um, doing something fun or hope you're in not you know in quarantine not getting anybody else sick or getting sick yourself um that's about it all right happy birthday bro thank you everyone for joining us this has been another edition another episode of quarantine cooking with mr pink shirt guy um i love you too man lingua 88 yeah i would like you you're welcome thank you so much for joining me uh this has been so good we only had i think 22,000 people this time so a little bit lighter don't 22 million excuse me that's okay I'm okay with that. I think that's a good amount to have. Not too much that it's like, you know, we can't handle it, but okay. Have a wonderful, safe Monday. We'll see you again tomorrow here at the same time, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard or Daylight. I don't know which is which. Um, same time, same place. Like and subscribe if you want. If not, don't, I don't care. It doesn't mean anything to me. I'm just so glad you showed up anyway. Or if you're watching this later, thanks so much anyway. Okay, that's it. I got enough yak and I'm gonna make another cocktail. Take care, guys. Bye. Stay safe. I'm going to do the lean in to end the stream. Okay. Oh, maybe I'll do the play out song. Did we get it? Did I do it on time? Okay. I can't hear. I don't have a monitor. All right. Take care, guys. Bye.